it's very difficult because one year the children not not well behaved. So our teachers paid per hour. No, or the teacher's salary is more than the nurse's salary, which but I had it. So what's like a normal shit like? Like when you go to work, what time do you start? What right. class do you teach? And like what what really happens right. when you go to work as a teacher? Oh, it's still so NHS pass written there. Hi guys, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. My name. Hello wonderful people, welcome back to my channel, uh, my name is Nanelle, if you don't know me, I'm originally from Ghana but currently practicing as a nurse in the UK, if you haven't subscribed already, kindly subscribe. Today I have here the wonderful Gemma! Hi folks! <laughs> yes, I have here Gemma, a very very special guest. So I've known Gemma for a couple of months, I work with her, she's a nurse and also a teacher. That's amazing right? You all know that the UK government has given opportunities for overseas teachers to get the qualified teacher status to apply to come and work here in the UK, right? And then since Gemma is a teacher, I'm just going to ask her a few questions about what it's like to be a teacher here in the UK, her experience so far, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. Yes. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Let me say that this video is probably sponsored by Lemonade Finance. So Lemonade Finance is a money transfer app that you can use to transfer money from the UK, Canada, and the US to 10 different African countries. You can send money from the UK, Canada, and US to Kenya, to Ghana, to Rwanda, to Nigeria, to Tanzania to Senegal to Cameroon Rwanda at no transfer charge no transfer charge at all and if you're already on Lemonade Finance you know they have the best rate on the market nobody beats them when it comes to their rates and the amazing thing is when you use the code Nanel to make your first transfer above £100 you get 10% of the money you're transferring back okay so when you send £100 you get £10 back when you send £200 you get £20 back ever since I discovered the Lemonade Finance that's what I have been using that's what all my friends have been using they are very very reliable they are very very convenient okay I recommend Lemonade money finance to everybody in the UK, US or Canada would like to send money to Africa to any of these 10 African countries. Okay, I'll leave links in the description so you can easily download it and make your first transfer now. Okay, thank you so much Lemonade Finance for sponsoring today's video. Hi Gemma. Hi. Welcome to my channel. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for granting me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much. So Gemma, uh, just briefly tell us a bit about yourself. Just briefly. Briefly, um, well, I'm a qualified nurse from 1990, but I had a degree in history. Gemma, do you know I have not been born yet 1990 uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you were a nurse as at the time yes wow. so I qualified in 1990 and I went into nursing late believe it or not I was 26 whenever I went into nursing wow and back then it was 17 people just straight from school went into nursing and then uh, they, they they qualified as a nurse but I went to university first Queen's University okay. in Belfast and I studied modern history okay so I had a history degree before I actually went into wow. nursing so I then was nursing I'm still nursing practicing as obviously I'm with you in the nursing home but I did a course called the PGCE which stands for postgraduate certificate of education and it's for people who already have degrees okay so we, you don't have to do the four-year teacher training okay. if you have a degree already you can you just need to do one year okay an intense course at university uh, and it's called the PGCE. Okay. And I did that up at the Ulster University in Coleraine in 2010. So since most of my viewers are overseas applicants, okay, you would rather have to do what we call the IQTS. I explained this into detail in my previous video, so I'm going to link it in the description so you can understand, okay? It's similar to what Gemma is describing, called the PGCE. So with the IQTS, it's mainly for international applicants. So you do this short training, it can be distance learning for a short while. With that one, you don't need to have experience as a teacher or you don't need to have gone for teacher training. So they'll give you this training and then they'll automatically award you their QTS so that you can apply for teaching jobs in the UK. You can watch the detailed video linked in the description below. Okay, so it's similar to what Gemma is describing. So it's for people who already have a degree but want to do a short course to get them their qualified teacher status that can allow them to apply for teaching jobs in the UK? Um, it was very intense, an intense course because you're obviously you're condensing four years of teacher training into, into one, one year. year. Yeah. Plus everything then became more um, technology. Okay. So you had you know, the whiteboards and all were coming into the classroom and it was all a bit of a culture shock to me because I was 46 at the time. Wow. So I, was, so I had to learn quite a lot. Fortunately, my co-students 
who were all a lot younger than me, obviously, because I, mean, I was at the same age as the lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> they helped me through the technology side of things. But because I was already a qualified nurse, I was able to work bank at the weekends for money and holidays. Wow. So I had the, um, the uh, fortune to have that career behind me, behind the nursing you. career behind me, to finance, you may say, and look after my, my house. I had two children at the time. Wow. I still have two children, but they're grown up now. So, so in all, how long have you been a nurse? And how long, in all, how many years have you been a nurse? 33 and, years a nurse. Wow, 33 years. Yeah. And for teaching, you've been a teacher for? Since 2010. Wow. Yeah, That's but I've, I've been, I was a bank nurse for a long time, a bank nurse from about 2008. I was doing bank nursing, and then from 2000 and 10, once I, when I qualified as a teacher, I was doing the two careers. Okay. Sub-teaching, substitute teaching is similar to bank nursing in yeah. that you go to a school when where, where they need, when they they need, need you. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what subjects do you teach? History. History. Yeah. So why history? Because you already had a degree in the history. Degrees in history. So that's yeah. why, yeah. okay. Yeah. So what's like a normal shit like, like when you go to work, what time do you start? What right. class do you teach? And like what, what really happens yeah. when you go to work as a teacher? Yeah. Huh. Well, as a sub teacher, you could be covering um, whatever teacher is out. Okay. So I mean, for example, there are, in June, I was covering science classes, English classes, which is a school just not far from the nursing home. Yeah. Uh, if I'm fortunate enough to, to cover my own subject history, um, I can just pick it up like that because it's it's all in there. Whereas if I'm going to cover the sciences, I'm depending on what the teacher has left for for the class. Does it happen to everybody as a sub teacher? Yeah. Can you just do for any other program? Yeah, but you, what you're doing. Uh, um, what if I'm not? What if I'm not good in that area? That's what I'm saying to you. The majority of the teachers will have left work. Okay. So you you have you're just really basically supervising the, um, the children. Okay. If it's not your subject. Okay. Okay. So what time do you go to work? How is it like? What time do you clock off? How is it? Shit well, the, no, the normal uh, school day starts at nine o'clock. Okay. And finishes at three uh, three fifteen. Okay. Uh, but a teachers teachers um, have a lot of lesson planning to do and marking homeworks and coursework and things. So the teachers' work is extended outside those those hours. Okay. So when you go to work, how many like lessons can you do in a day? Like, what's it really like? Like, how well, many hours do you teach per shift and yeah. all that? Right. Well, the, the lessons usually last for about forty minutes. Okay. And that would be maybe three lessons in the morning and two in the afternoon. You get a lunch break, obviously, and a, tea, a break in the morning. But as a sub-teacher, you just go to the staff room and you pick up what classes you're going to be covering for the day. A permanent teacher is totally different. Okay. A permanent teacher would have their own schedule, their own lesson planning, their own students. It's, you know, it's easier, but at the same time, it's also harder because you're more uh, responsible. Okay. Because you have all these, this lesson planning to do. The sub-teacher, you're more... Uh, more like a babysitter okay okay so what Gemma is trying to say that for her she's been doing sub teaching most of the time but for most of you watching me if you come you're probably going to be a permanent teacher yep. yeah so for her let's say if you are not well and you're not able to come in and then she will have to cover for you yeah so for you if you're a permanent teacher there's there's a lot more involved and um, but for her she sometimes that sub teaching where she can pick any any uh, subject yeah, and any school any any subjects or any school at all but usually the permanent teachers may have left lessons and stuff so she just comes and then she just that's it yeah. okay so our teachers paid per hour or no, fixed rate is a fixed yeah. rate so um a really qualified teacher would be on lower pay than obviously a teacher 10 years so a bit like nursing. Your, your increment goes up every year every year yeah, yeah. okay yeah okay um roughly if you are like a permanent teacher how much are you likely to take home per month roughly um the, the teacher's salary is more than the nurse's salary which was a big really? shock to me yes because that's apparently it's different in other countries in america the, t the nurses, nurses get paid more, more and but here in the uk uh teachers make more so you would as a newly qualified teacher you would be coming out with in your hand that's after tax and all about 27,000 per year okay yeah okay and that's newly qualified newly qualified newly qu if you were to choose which one would you prefer teaching you, you choose teaching yeah, yeah. I'm, hurting. I'm hurting my heart has always been in teaching teaching history particularly that's my passion history 
uh, but unfortunately my life just didn't go that way. <laughs> I went into teaching too, too late. Things have changed now. We need teachers more now. That's why we're... Yeah. But 10 years ago there were no... It wasn't like no. that. But, and I did further education for two years. Okay. I enjoyed it because you're teaching adults and they want to learn so you have less classroom challenges okay. with the adults okay yeah that's true so like for teachers for permanent teachers let's say this the kids are on vacation what do you do you still get paid all right when their kids are yes. on vacation yeah. Permanent then, teacher, yeah. what do you do like when the kids are on vacation nothing there's nothing for you to do as a teacher or do they organize like trainings like what happens on vacation in summertime on vacation yes well, a, lot, a lot of teachers can afford their own holiday homes in spain <laughs> Throw on a bigger salary, <laughs> <laughs> so they just do what they want in the summertime. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's I mean, more like there's, the a, there's a teacher next next door is a teacher, and they they um they just go camping all summer, and in, in France or somewhere. So it's like you have time for yourself and your family yeah, yeah. When, you, when you're a teacher. Wow, yeah, yeah. wow. So, um, but what are the challenges? Would you say the challenges in the classroom as a teacher? Well, as a t challenges for um the teacher would be keeping the children. Depending on the age group, depending on the school, depends on the school. A lot of school, some schools are yeah. nice, well-behaved children, particularly grammar schools, and some schools, secondary schools, could be more challenging because you have a lot more social issues. So you'd have a lot more classroom management. And if you're teaching history to children who maybe have a lot of social issues, it's very difficult because one year is a long time for a child, never mind 500 years. So trying to keep them <laughs> focused can be challenging for the teacher. <laughs> yeah, so you always have to have other work, you know, to, to, to get the, you know, 40 minutes can seem, seem short, but if you have a challenging class, it can seem like four hours. Yeah. So always have plenty of material to, um, to keep them focused. So let's say I come over and I come to teach. Will I be inducted properly? Like how long is the induction period? How is it? Is, are they really supportive on that side? Well, if you were coming over, um, you probably would uh, probably be starting off on the Northern Ireland Substitute Teacher Registration. Most of them are even going to England anyways. Yeah, but the, the, there's, a, there's a registry here called the NISTRA, which stands for the Northern Irish Substitute Teachers Registration. Okay. And if you enroll with that, then you will get plenty of sub work which gives you experience if you don't have any experience in this, in this country and that's a good way of getting experience um, by being a sub teacher and that's the okay. that's the board that you'd apply to NISTRA. What age group do you teach? A secondary school which is 11 teenagers. Like 11 years? 11 up until uh, leaving school. Until leaving school. Okay, so my main issue is for immigrants or for foreigners, what do you think will be our challenge? I am thinking the accent, because I tell you... You're thinking what? The accent. Oh, the accent, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that I would tell be, you, because yeah. sometimes, like, when I first came, I, so I used to struggle to hear some of the things mm -hmm. that, like, mm -hmm. people say yeah, around. Yeah. So I'm thinking that if you're in a class full of Northern Irish kids, mm -hmm. and you see how we talk, they might not understand, and then when they talk, you might not understand as well. What do you think? Again, it depends on the school. Okay. You know, if you're going to go to a nice middle class grammar school, you're going to get a lot of people, a lot of children who are very tolerant and very what's well the behaved. What's the difference between a grammar school and, and a secondary school? Secondary school is children who have failed or didn't do the 11 plus, which is an exam that children sit at the age of 11. And if they pass it, it determines what school they can go to. So grammar school tends to be a bit more upper class well it's middle class so better resources better facilities better well-behaved children better social and economic backgrounds does that make sense okay yeah okay. whereas the secondary schools tend to be more children from more working class areas well okay. i went to a secondary school so i know what i'm talking about and it can be a bit rough when i say rough i mean the children not not well behaved myself included <laughs> So, because you come from that time of area, and you're just yeah. But where is there really shortage? Is it the grammar schools or the both? Both, yeah, shortage yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. it's really now. So you have to be streetwise if you want to teach in a secondary school. Are they mean? Are the kids mean? Can no, they mean? no, no. Yeah. Children are children, no matter where where you go. I mean, you know, you you, you get to win their affection and their trust, and you have them where you want them. 
Okay. Well, what would you say your final words to people that want to enter into teaching? Yes, um, I would. I envy you. <laughs> I wish I was younger and I would definitely pursue a teaching career here, yeah. Uh, particularly in uh, if you, further education would be a nice a nice area. When you say further education, you mean like in the university? Adults. Adults. Adults, okay. Well, college. College. Yeah, so this is people who, are, who go back to the, the school. Okay. And you're teaching people in their 20s and 30s and they're really determined and they're really focused and it's easy. You can just sit back and relax as a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> they know why they are there and they are They know why they're, they're focused, yes, yeah. and they want to learn, yeah. Wow, thank you yeah. so much, you're Joma. Welcome. I've so, learned a lot. Thank you're, you you're so welcome, much. Yeah. yeah. So good luck, everybody. Ah, oh, thank you. Guys, if you enjoyed this, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Joma. Bye. Okay. Some schools are 